Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh or peace be upon you. Hello to those of you who are not listening. Um, welcome to my first official video on my channel. Um, and today I would like to talk about my journey to self acceptance and confidence. And I think from going, let's say, from ages 12 to 13, um, <laughs> where I was completely, really, really, really not self confident to who I am today as a 22 year old woman and what has helped me become a confident person and I hope through sharing this with you I can help you and inspire other people to try that to try and gain that sense that I'm sorry to start on that journey to self-confidence um so yeah I just want to kind of start off with so I'm going to be looking down a lot I'm still trying to get used to this um remembering stuff in YouTube life um so yeah I want to start off with just talking about really the initial struggles I went through in my early teen years um I remember when I was in year seven and I was like the first person not the first person but I would say one of the only people in the whole school who was a black Muslim who wasn't Somali that was wearing a hijab and bearing in mind it's not like there was that many Somalis anyway so majority of the people who did wear scarf were Asian and you know at that age you just want you want to be I guess you want to be accepted and that really hindered me because back then I was really quiet and then people would say to me well you're not Nigerian even Nigerian people would tell me I'm not Nigerian because I wear hijab it's like no you're Somali you must be Somali you must be something else and I'm like no I'm Nigerian even though looking back now I mean those people are the ones who are stupid because more than 50% of Nigeria is Muslim but at that age you know you're well for me anyway I wasn't really about to argue with them on an intellectual level I just wanted them to accept me and that was really difficult for me so I think it started making me from a young age associate hijab with oppression but not oppression in the western context but oppression in terms of it stopped me from being able to fit in with my in group which was blacks you know it stopped me from being able to fit in with fellow black people at that age because i look different from them and they weren't really accepting me in my school so from there eventually i actually went to Muslim secondary school um which was better um definitely better and i gained more self-confidence however I think I still had this thing in me where I wanted to live my life to the fullest and live my teenage life to the fullest and that carried on to when I was in college and I felt hindered you know all these my friends especially in college and my non-Muslim friends they were having all these amazing experiences and I was just there the boring Muslim girl you know, who'd never done anything, you know, and it just was kind of boring and it made me feel that I wasn't basically a normal teenager and I wasn't going through normal teenage experiences. I didn't feel that I was transitioning really from a girl to a woman because I had not done, I guess, what society calls that transition. You know, I wasn't kissing guys, I wasn't dressing, you know, I wasn't showing off that, um, pre-pubescent oh it's not pre-pubescent post pre post puberty put it that way post puberty change and body you know like showing off the fact that yes i'm developed and i'm a woman and i think that pressure is really there at that age to show that transition because i'm sure and i was I'm still slim now but i was really slim back then i felt that i was 16 or 18 that i, I look like a 12 year old and you know, because I was covering my body too in all these baggy clothes, it was, you know, it just really didn't, you know, it didn't really make me feel that I was, you know, changing into a woman and I didn't feel that, that confidence at that age, which eventually kind of led to me taking my hijab off. Um, but as a whole, you know, it was just such a harsh time and I didn't feel that I could really explain this to anybody. I didn't feel that I could really talk to anybody about how I felt. And I actually ended up going to counselling before I took my hijab. Um, because I just felt like, you know, it was a bit shameful, if that makes sense. You know, it was that 
admitted to people that you have a low self-esteem I felt ashamed by it because I was such a you know by the time I was 17 18 I was quite confident externally um, and I was you know the class clown everybody you know if somebody wanted to laugh they'll come to me you know I was the jolly person the loud person and it's like for someone who is jolly allowed to say well I don't feel confident in myself it's not exactly the easiest thing to do so I think I just kind of held it to myself held it to myself and put hijab as the scapegoat of why I felt that way and the only way I was going to feel better was to take it off um, and that is kind of the path that self-esteem having low self-esteem can lead you onto you know sometimes I think in the Muslim community we judge a lot we judge other Muslims for maybe dressing a certain way, doing this or doing that but you don't know how they feel inside you know maybe they're trying to do that to gain that self-confidence and I can completely understand how difficult it is especially in your teens you know to wear hijab confidently but not just externally but internally wear your hijab um, and then hold on a second let me just find make sure that I'm not missing out anything because yeah I think another thing is finding who you are as a person at that age or really trying to find your identity and who you are and for me when you know I was that age I think there's so many labels well I'm personally a black a Muslim I'm a female and you are you know I call it the triple threat now you are basically three things that are very threatening to society and for me I had to try and merge all those things in and I found it really 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 hard you know at times I wish I was just black in a sense so I was just Muslim or just female because it's hard enough just being one and having to be all three you know was just hard I mean now I love it I embrace it I write about it I'm talking about it now it's amazing to me but back then it wasn't and it was very very difficult and for me what actually helped me eventually you know, it took me years to figure it out but what actually helped me was turning back to Islam number one you know I my mom bought me this book by Yasmin Mujahid called Reclaim Your Heart and that really really helped me because in that book I started reading about attachments you know and how we get attached to people and things and etc and no one is going to give you that love or that I'm trying to think of the word that contentment in yourself except Allah because human beings will always let you down and society's fashions and fads or whatever will always change but if you believe I'm a creation of God and God has made me for a purpose that really really helped me and understanding the psychological underpinnings to why I felt the way I did helped immensely because before it was just a matter of oh you're not wearing hijab or you know you need to read the eyes in the Quran about hijab um, it's because you don't understand it's because you don't have knowledge and that was the opposite I had knowledge I knew exactly what the Quran said about hijab I knew exactly what the hadith said about covering but I did not feel attractive enough or beautiful enough to really take it seriously because my mum used to say oh you're precious German people don't just show you know diamonds everywhere I'm sure we've all heard that before and I was just thinking like I'm not a diamond like whatever like I did not feel that way so I couldn't really take the you know the chronic eyes of cover your adornment seriously because I did not feel like an adornment but the minute I started feeling like you know what actually I am special that changed everything and when I started thinking that I don't need to go to another human being to make me feel good about myself Allah is enough for me that just changed the whole ball game you know so that really really helped me and also, you know, re-establishing my salah. Salah is so important, which is obviously one of the main things in Islam. Um, salah really helped me to regain that spiritual connection. Whereas when I was younger, I didn't take my salah seriously. So I didn't really have that connection with God. I was just praying for the sake of, you know, 
once in a while praying just because my mum told me wearing hijab because I was used to it. Nothing really had that deep spiritual meaning. Um, and also, more recently, the way I maintain that self-confidence is by feeding myself positive things. You know, that I think that is so, so important. You know, on my social media, for instance, on my Instagram and all these things, I always I try and follow poets, I try and follow people who talk about positive things. Um, I buy a lot of books, like, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Naira Walid, um, and different, uh, you know, so many poets, you know, like Naira Walid, she has some amazing, amazing poetry, and I remember one of them that really made me think, it was something like, beauty, you see a flaw, how can you see a flaw in your face when, you, when you're the only one who has this face? And when I read poetry like that, it really makes me think and reflect like, wow, it's true. How can I say that I have a flaw when I'm the only one with this face? Like, I am unique. There is no one else like me. So I can't compare myself to other people. And when you start feeding yourself this information slowly, slowly, I think it really does help your confidence because you're making yourself think differently. You're learning to think in a different way before if you're just following all these you know people that you think look better than you um and etc you're just kind of constantly compare yourself to them and in turn feel inadequate you know and also another book i read that was really good was the beauty myth by actually by naomi wolf who is a feminist um and her book is really good too and it talks about the beauty standards, you know, that are set for women in the West and how making women feel inadequate basically helps the beauty industry, which is quite obvious. And, you know, how almost being ugly is a crime because now there's makeup, there's plastic surgery, there's all these things. There's no excuse for you to look shabby, quote unquote. So I th reading these things helped me think and be more reflective about what my perceptions of beauty were. So that, that was a big help for me um what i else have i missed out um also yeah having my own actually writing my own work you know now i personally i write a lot when i'm feeling down or i feel a certain kind of way i express my emotions whereas when i was younger i would keep it to myself you know, now I will talk to someone, or even if I don't want to talk to someone, I'll just go on, um, I'll just get my phone, get a book, and just start writing my own poetry and expressing my emotions, expressing myself. Nothing is held in and contained, and talking to Allah about it. Um, and all these things for me really helped me get to where I am today. So, self love, I think, is a journey and it's not going to happen overnight. But slowly but surely, you know, we can all get there, you know. So this is my personal um, journey into self-love and confidence. If you have any comments, please say. Please subscribe. And yeah, thank you for 